Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Yashoda Nandana Bhaja Janna Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Bhaja Janna Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mr. Bhav Paramahansa Buddha Jagacha Jastro Tirtha Sri Sri Madhu Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Kijai Iskan Bibiti Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Kijai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Buddha Jagacha Jastro Tirtha Sri Sri Madhu Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Kijai Ananda Kodi Vaishnava Vinda Kijai Nama Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Kijai Upadesha Amrita Ki Jai, Samaveda Bhaktivinoda Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shiguru and Varanga. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Continuing with our study of the Sri Ubhadeshamrita, the Nectar of Instruction by Srila Rupa Goswami. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> On this fifth day of November 2018 in San Diego, a reading from the Sri Ubhadeshamrita, the Nectar of Instruction by Srila Rupa Goswami, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We are on text four. Dadati patigrinati Guya makyati pritchati Bhunkte bojayate chaiva Shadvidham priti lakshanam Tadati Padaghanati Guya Makati Pritchati Bhunkte Bojayati Chaiva Shadvidham Priti Lakshanam Tadati Padaghanati Guya Makati Pritchati Bhunkte Bojayati Chaiva Shadvidham Preeti Lakshanam. One of you. Dadati Padigrinati. Goya Makati Pritchati. Bhunkte Bojayati Chaiva. Shadvidham Preeti Lakshanam. Dadati Padigrinati. Guya Makati Pritchati 
भुंक्ते बोधयते चैव षड्विधम प्रीति लक्षणम तदाति पटघन्नाति गोयमा क्याति पिच्चति भुंक्ते बोधयते चैव षड्विधम प्रीति लक्षणम ओके ट्रांसलेशन ऑफरिंग गिफ्ट्स इन चैरिटी Accepting charitable gifts, revealing one's mind in confidence, inquiring confidentially, accepting prasadam and offering prasadam are the six symptoms of love shared by one devotee and another. And skipping down to the unread portion of this purport. If the members of human society actually want peace of mind, tranquility and friendly relations between men and between, between nations, they must follow the Krishna conscious system of religion, by which they can develop their dormant love for Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As soon as people do so, their minds will immediately be filled with peace and tranquility. In this regard, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur warns all devotees engaged in broadcasting the Krishna consciousness movement not to speak to the impersonalists or Maya bodies who are always determined to oppose such theistic movements. The world is full of mayavadis and atheists, and the political parties of the world take advantage of mayavad and other atheistic philosophies to promote materialism. Sometimes they even back a strong party to oppose the Krishna consciousness movement. The mayavadis and other atheists do not want the Krishna consciousness movement to develop because it educates people in God consciousness. Such is the policy of the atheists. There is no benefit in feeding a snake milk and bananas because the snake will never be satisfied. On the contrary, by taking milk and bananas, the, sn the snake simply becomes more poisonous. Kevalam Vishavardhanam. If a snake is given milk to drink, its poison simply increases. For a similar reason, we should not disclose our minds to the serpent mayavadis and karmis. Such disclosures will never help. It is best to completely avoid associating with them and never ask them about anything confidential because they cannot give good advice. Nor should we extend invitations to Maya bodies and atheists or accept their invitations, for by such intimate intermingling we may become affected by their atheistic mentality. Sangat Sanjayate Kama. It is the negative injunction of this verse that we should refrain from giving anything to or accepting anything from Maya bodies and atheists. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has also warned, Vishayera Anna Kaila Dushta Hoyaman. When one eats food prepared by worldly people, one's mind becomes wicked. Unless one is very advanced, he is unable to utilize everyone's contribution to further the Krishna consciousness movement. Therefore, on principle, one should not accept charity from the Mayavadis or atheists. Indeed, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has forbidden devotees to associate even with ordinary men who are too addicted to material. Sense gratification. Om Jnana Timurandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmidatam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurudevam. So uh, the verse is giving us some direct instruction. Now this verse, the next verse, and the verse after it are all about how to deal with different devotees, how to uh, how to uh, exchange loving exchanges, how to respect them. And also have to be careful in not judging devotees by their physical appearance and their, whether they have a disease condition or not. That's in there also. So this uh, first it begins, the first paragraph we read, Srila Prabhupada gives a very expansive and hopeful uh, instruction here that if member society want peace of mind, tranquility, and friendly relations between men and nations, they must follow Krishna kind of system of religion. So... This is the age of Kali, which means quarrel and dissension and war. And everywhere we have this, on different levels. You have hot wars going on in the Middle East and in North Africa. You have cyber wars going on between all kinds of countries. You have economic wars through sanctions. And you have a huge propaganda war that's always going on, throwing, hurling insults and all kinds of things. So this is, this is the age of Kali. And that's what happens. The, it all begins in the heart of individual people. We should never think that there's some disembodied system. Oh, it's capitalism. It's socialism. It's got. No, that's just a mental construct, some philosophy about how to organize society. 
but everything really resides within the heart. And when the, the, uh, there's no Krishna consciousness, naturally materialism takes over and uh, the lower modes become very prominent. That's the whole progression of the different yugas is that the, lower, the different modes become more and more prominent. And in this age, the mode of passion and ignorance is very prominent and predominant. So what's the result of that? It increased in lust and greed and anger and uh, illusion, uh, material uh, involvement. So uh, that's what we see, is that, the, that if you analyze, say, uh, you know, the different social movements in America, say, for the last hundred years, you have certain people who are a little more sensitive to others' suffering, and uh, they employ their intelligence, their education, their money, their time in trying to help the more uh, unfortunate people. This whole thing with the abolition of slavery in America came about because in, in the North, and there were certain uh, people who uh, were, were reading certain books and learning certain things, and they became uh, aghast and just appalled by what was going on in the South. But the Southerners were deeply enmeshed in that, mostly you know, white Southerners, and they were making tons of money on it, and uh, they didn't want to let it go for anything. So you had the mode of passion with the greed and the lust, you know, completely blinding people to the suffering they're causing, to any kind of uh, compassion or empathy. It's, it's really mind-blowing when you think about it. Millions of people. You're growing up in that society, and, and it's just taken for granted, yeah, these are the slaves, you know, they're not human beings, even though they have all the human symptoms and everything. So, similar thing is going on now. When you think about the, the, the cow slaughter going on in America, or throughout the world, even though that, you know, it's, it's, um, it's so bad for your health, it's bad for the economy, it's bad for the, the environment. You know, they were saying that if people would just give up like one day of meat e eating, one, one day a week, it would have a tremendous impact on this global warming problem. It's not just the, uh, the methane that's coming out, you know, all these animals, the cattle, but also the, all the tremendous amount of uh, land that's needed and, and money to cultivate in order to get a pound of meat, you know, it's like you know, so much water, and then transporting it and refrigeration and all of this stuff. I mean, it has to, it's fossil fuels being burned for that. The whole thing is just, is just crazy. For what? I mean, as, as devotees, we realize, you know, most of us were meat eaters, except for uh, Ramapati here. What's the big deal? You know? In other words, when you realize what, a, it, uh, what an incredible waste it is and how damaging it is for your own karma and for the environment and for everything, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just a no-brainer. But that's just the point. These people have no brains because they're, they're overcome by their lust and greed. So... Uh, if the members of Yuma Sai want peace in mind, tranquility, they have to follow Krishna Khan. They have to undergo the change of heart. That famous title of the second, I think, chapter, the second canto, the change of heart. The whole thing is to, is to purify the heart and, and sublimate, come up the modes, you know, come to the mode of goodness at least, where you, you, you'll have concern for others, have some empathy, sympathy, and your whole life will change. So, uh, now, in this regard, Bhaktisattva talks about uh, not associating with the Mayavadis. Of course, Mayavadis, you don't, you don't usually see an orthodox Mayavadi these days in, a, in the West. You've, I'm sure there's plenty of them in India, which is where Bhaktisattva Saraswati was teaching. But the essence of the Mayavad is, is impersonalism, atheism. And that you see plenty of, even amongst those who, who uh, are titularly religious people. You know, if you're worshiping a god who's really not God, who is, is a vengeful god, it's some mental construct. It's really not, you know, revelation coming down in disciplic succession. Then that's kind of worse than atheism. That's, that's like taking people in, you know, into a dead end. So the Mayavadis are like that. They, are, they, they uh, apparently base everything on the Vedas, the Vedanta Sutra, you see, but their, their ultimate conception is that there's nobody out there, is that the ultimate reality is just an energy, is just a Brahman. It depersonalizes. The, the, the uh, scientific 
the, or let's say modern science has, uh, e even unconsciously, has worked to, to depersonalize and reify everything. Reify means make it into a thing. You deal with, if, if, you're, if you're a big enough capitalist and you have so many employees and you're always dealing with the money and, and you know, all of that and, and the algorithms and crawling your way up, you know, from the, the 10 million a year to, to make become a billionaire, then, then your employees become just resources. And now there's this whole move to just get rid of the employee. What do we need them for? We'll just have robots. That's, that's going on now. And what happens to those people? How, many, how much room do we have here on the corner of Hornblend and Dawes, you know, to, for people to hang out, unemployed, human detritus, extra people? It's, it's totally demoniac. So that it leads, the Mayavad leads toward gross atheism and depersonalization. So therefore, we should not associate with them, uh, listening to their uh, arguments. Now, this, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Don't extend invitations. So Prabhupada is working off this verse. In other words, these are our, our uh, didati pratagunati, these six symptoms of, of uh, interchange or priti lakshanam. Um, loving exchanges, they open you up to the influence of the other person. We want that with devotees. We want to, we want to get you know their realization in Krishna Kata. We want to share ours. We want to uh, share prasadam and gifts and so forth. That's the relationships you want to, the bonds you want to grow. Uh, but you become influenced by that person. That's fine when they're devotees. You want that. But, you, but the same things will happen if you, if you do it. The same influence will be there if you do it with uh, non-devotees. Uh, and even here, it is described, accepting gifts. So that seems to be kind of a, what, what about when you get a donation on Sankirtan, the person may be an atheist. Now, you go, of course, you're giving them a book. So it's a different kind of exchange. You're helping them. Um, so you could say that the, the influence isn't there. But if someone, if, if, if you get um, uh, a gross atheist giving donations to you on a material level just for something you need rather than dropping it in the box, say, then that can, that can have a deleterious effect because then you develop a relationship. Then you want to hear from them. They want to speak to you. They want, they, they're doing it because they want a relationship. So we have to be careful of that. That's what's being mentioned here. Sangat Sanjayate Kama. This is a line from uh, the Bhagavad Gita, second chapter. And it's really important to know this. Uh, Sangat Sanjayate, your association generates your desires. It's kind of, it's, it's pulled out of context in one sense to give it a, a broader meaning. When Krishna speaks it in the Bhagavad Gita, I'm just reading the verse today, Dhyadovriyan Pungsa Sangastesha Bajayate. Sangat Sanjayate Kama, Kama Kota Bajayate. So what he's saying is there is what you meditate on, what you allow to uh, enter your mind, that uh, if it's, if it's the, uh, the objects of the senses, you're, you're meditating on something that you consider will be pleasing to you, then you're going to get an attachment for it. You're going to try to try to figure out how you can actually obtain it so you can enjoy it. So Dhyayadovashyandra Sangat, that meditation on something that's somewhat attractive produces real attachment. And, and that uh, attachment, when it increases, produces kama. It comes in, real, I really want it. Somehow or other, I've got to have it. You know, that kama is stronger than attachment. Attachment is, is, impor is uh, a desire for something, but kama is kind of an almost an uncontrollable desire for it. And that uh, then produces uh, anger when it's frustrated inevitably and goes down, down. But this one line is simply taken out. Instead of attachment, it says association. Sangat means association and attachment both. In this context, it means association produces desire. And that's the, the, uh, the whole principle of advertising. Somehow or other, grab your attention so they got even just a few moments of your attention on something that you want. And they're very skilled, these guys, you know, in, in, in planning within a few seconds that desire, that interest, that will then hopefully fructify when, you, when you're in the market for something like that to go and buy their product. So that's, and, and the material energy is doing that all the time on our own. So many things that present ourselves to our senses and a certain set of them 
is uh, something that we desire. So as soon as you perceive it, then the desire grows and then you have to have it. You go make money to buy it. And this is the whole thing goes on. And, and of course, when you enjoy it, that, that really plants a stronger desire in your heart to have it again, again, and again, and again. And eventually you die with a whole bunch of these desires unfulfilled and you have to take a birth again. So, uh, even food. Now, here's an important point. I make it a point because, I, of course, I have a facility, but we all have a facility. You know, I'm, I'm not going out and buying this bread uh, or anything that's cooked by karmis. I mean, I remember working on the Chaitanya Charitamrita and reading this, something that's similar to this about how deleterious it is to, to, to eat grains cooked by the karmis because that they place their consciousness into it. You know, even if it is made by a machine, that in itself will have its effect on your consciousness. You want to eat something that's made by a devotee with devotion and offered with devotion. That enters into the food, makes it prasadam. And then you're actually purified by eating it. So, that, so if, if at all possible, one has to avoid eating uh, food prepared by worldly people. As it said here, vishayira amla, amla is grains. Vishayira amla kaila dushta hoyaman. When one eats food prepared by worldly people, one's mind becomes wicked. That's why there's always cooking going on. Devotees cooking. And it's much healthier. You see, the, the, the karmis, they don't care about your health at all. You know, they may care about uh, being, being uh, uh, charged with not caring about your health. And so they pretend to. But they'll, they'll make these foods, you know, they engineer them. There's a whole art and whole science. They spend millions of dollars mouthfeel, just a combination of salt, fat, and, and, and sugar. You know, you walk down, sometimes I go to uh, Ralph's for one reason, to get kale. And up until yesterday, they had kale for only 99 cents for a big organic kale, which is like a superfood. But nobody wants it. They'd rather have the Doritos chips, you know, for $5 an ounce or whatever it is. Uh, so the, this kale was 99 cents. It's a great buy. Now they, they upped it to $1.25. I'll still buy it. So I go in there, but sometimes I have to pass water. I go in the back and, oh, my God. Whole roll is like whole roll of just snacks. You know, this chip, that chip, this, this. They, Then it wouldn't be there unless people are buying them. So what do they put in there? The main ingredient? High fructose corn, corn syrup. That's, that's the, you see everyone so fat? There's a fat because of that high fructose corn ship, the syrup. And, the, and the, the, the snacks that are engineered to just make you eat more and more and more. And uh, it's horrible. So this is a great advantage we have with the diet. If we just make everything fresh, no processed food, you know, then it's much healthier. But we still shouldn't eat too much. So, but if you, if you eat food prepared by karmis, worldly people, your mind will become wicked. Unless he's very advanced, one is unable to utilize everyone's contribution to further Krishna consciousness movement. So anyway, this, uh, we should be careful what we eat, who we associate with, and uh, it save these loving exchanges for the devotees. The conclusion is that we should always keep company with devotees, observe the regulative devotional principles, follow in the footsteps of the acharyas, and in full obedience carry out the orders of the spiritual master. In this way, we shall be able to develop our devotional service and dormant Krishna consciousness. The devotee who is neither a neophyte nor a Mahabhagavat, a greatly advanced devotee, but is within the middle status of devotional service, is expected to love the Supreme Personality of Godhead, make friends with the devotees, show favor to the ignorant, and reject the jealous and the demoniac. Who knows the verse? Ishwade, Tadarineshu, Baliseshu, Dushachacha. Prema Maiti Kripa Upeksha. This is in the nine Yogendras sections. It's worth reviewing them. There's all kinds of important instructions in there. So he starts out describing the Mahabhagavat. So he who sees, basically sees everyone in God and God in everyone, uh, another understanding is that it sees within everyone the potency to become a pure devotee. And then ultimately the, the, the great Mahabhagavats, they see everyone as a devotee except themselves because they all have that, you know. Uh, that's the highest Mahabhagavat. But we're enjoying, we at least come to the Madhyama platform and that's this one which is the most famous. 
Ishvara Tadari Dei. There's four things being listed. Ishvara, the Supreme Personality of God. Adineshu, those, things in, those devotees in relation to him. That's the, the, that, those uh, people in relation to him, that's the devotees. Adineshu. Bali Sheshu, those are the innocent. Bala is like, like a little child, innocent people. And Vishatsu, the envious, the out and out declared atheists. These are four, four broad categories of beings that one recognizes. And then there are four different ways of relating to them. Each is Premi, Prema, to develop love for the Lord. Maitri, friendship with the devotees. Kripa Upeksha, to show mercy to the innocent by trying to give them Krishna consciousness. Uh, uh, kripa, kripa, kripa Upeksha, I think Kripa Upeksha means uh, to, to ignore or uh, to avoid the, uh, the dem- demoniac and the, the atheist. So that's what we're supposed to come to, that, that platform. And that's what the preaching movement is. When you go out, you're looking for those innocent people, someone who's a little curious, a little open. They're performing all kinds of sinful activities. They're not devotees. But they're not so... Uh, they're, they're confused, basically. This is about... You know, Kali Yuga's like that. Most people are just like completely bewildered about anything and they're being led by the demons. So if someone is uh, in that mood and is a little curious, they can get the seed of bhakti. They can open themselves up. And that's the, how, you, how, how the movement grows. Okay, uh, in this verse, th- this verse, there is a brief mention of the process of making loving transactions with the Supreme Personality of God and making friends with the devotees. According to the Dadati principle, an, uh, an advanced devotee is supposed to spend at least 50% of his income on the service of the Lord and his devotees. Sri Rupa Goswami has set such an example in his life. When he decided to retire, he distributed 50% of his life's earnings to Krishna's service and 25% to his relatives and kept 25% for personal emergencies. This example should be followed by all devotees. Whatever one's income, 50% should be spent on behalf of Krishna and his devotees, and this will fulfill the demands of the dati. In the next verse, Sri Rupa Goswami informs us what kind of Vaishnav should be selected as a friend and how Vaishnavs should be served. So he's continuing this. Out of 11 verses, he's got three of them that deal just with the relation between devotees because it's so important, you know, starting with this one. So uh, that's the end of that purport. And we're a little short here. So we don't have time to uh, really, uh, because we want to chant this one next Monday, we'll begin it. So what we can do is, um, I can continue reading from this uh, Govardhan Leela. I mean this from this... uh, Damodar Lila. Let's see where we are. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Ah, uh, you got it there? Is it on? Krishna? Yeah, something's on. Okay, so uh, just a comment and a question. So the comment was kind of, um, well, it's... Uh, totally related to the topic of this class. I was listening to a lecture by Narendra Swami, and he was talking about um, these essays that Bhaktivinoda Thakur had done, and they were um, on the principles favorable and unfavorable for devotional service. And specifically the one that this lecture was on was association, which is obviously what we're talking about today. Uh Um, And he was saying how we... um, uh, the purport of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's essays was uh, showing love to how, I guess, uh, we show love uh, to the devotee, um, to the to the innocent, to the materialist, uh-huh. and then to the atheist. And he was saying how, um, well, going based off of Rupa Goswami's definition of love, which is to um, serve one um, and to I mean, just do what it takes to serve them. Um, he was saying, um, well, the devotee, it, we should really only show love towards devotees because the devotee, um, their desires, if we're wanting to please them, their desires are pure. They want to serve Krishna. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we we don't... Um, we so don't the idea is that uh, in the material world, love is confused because you're trying, you, you're tr- if you're trying to please somebody, but they have material desires, yeah. 
then it's contaminated. And yeah, yeah. Like and he was saying, oh yeah, it. Um, then the materialist, oh, you show them, um, you show them that love um, by, you do it out of duty, really, um, for the spiritual master and Krishna. Uh -huh. You reach out to them and preach to them. And then the atheist, like this, says you neglect because their desires are, their desires are to. And go they're, they're kind Krishna. of immune to Krishna consciousness. They're yeah. just polluted, it's like pearl before swine. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, that was my comment, just kind of relating it to this class. Um, and also my question. So you, the purport had said um, that we should. Yeah, you want to hold that. Mic. That we should not invite um, the atheists or have association with them. Um, but I'm wondering if I should say this over the microphone. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> Well, you can't, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, if you're inviting a class, you say, anyone who's atheist, please raise your hand. Okay, you're disinvited. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> I think what, what you have to do basically is, um, do, you know, figure it out in such a way that they can't lay out their whole thing. You know what I mean? In other words, you don't want them just coming into the, into the temple and starting preaching atheism and, you know, like that. Let, chances are that if they, they take the trouble to come along and come, you know, unless they're really dyed in the wool and on a mission, you know, to destroy the Hare Krishnas, they'll, they'll show a little respect and deference and shut up, you know. So, that, so if you just continue to, to, to present Krishna consciousness and, and so forth, um, it, it, they won't be able to have the effect of, of like really uh, contaminating everything and causing a big disturbance. Uh, generally, you don't. F you know, you find people who uh, they don't. They don't really know exactly why they believe what they believe. You know, you rarely, rarely find someone who's got all the arguments down, who's read all the books, and is really on a mission to promote Mayavad or or atheism. You know, you find people who are doubters. Basically, they doubt. I was an atheist. You know, I didn't have any. I wasn't on a mission. I didn't go, you know, and start railing away at churches, you know, and then take that out of my head. But I thought it was just foolishness. It just seemed like the opiate of the people. I was raised as a Marxist, as a communist, you know. So, uh, but in the, in the course of my life, <laughs> uh, I found, you know, I ran into some trouble. I got sick. I was uh, confused about what to do and everything. And in that distressed state, I took up yoga and that brought me in touch with this culture and the chanting and the books, and I was very, very philosophically inclined. So, I was, you know, but but uh, you know, you got you have you have to deal with the with the candidates you have, and if within uh, a class which is mostly innocent kids just taking notes, you know, don't have any strong philosophy, uh, you're going to find an atheist. Well, what are you going to do? You know, you have to deal with it in such a way that you just keep. Well, okay, you know, we'll talk later, but, you know, now we, you know, I'm going to explain what the deities are all about, you know. And, and if they take prasadam, you know, that'll, that'll affect them. I mean, that, mean, that it means that they're going to come closer to Krishna. Yeah, actually, that's nice. Um, Even the atheists like prasadam. Yeah, there was more of men who got prasadam who actually gave them prasadam. They actually offered jiva to the deities. So this is their last atheist life. Yeah. Okay, Balram. Oh, they missed him. <laughs> Of course, with brahmacharis, I, it's, it's different, but this particular injunction, well, I mean, of course, Rupa Goswami, anyways, but the injunction about the 50%. Yeah, the 50%. And, you know, devotees seem to understand that in different ways, because... <laughs> I've, I've yet to meet a, a real a, a householder, at least in America, who's able to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, is it that, okay, you have your rent or your mortgage, you have your bills... You know, in other words, it's, and then, it's fifty percent of the profit, and that's then and, and, yeah, and then the, and then it's like then you have whatever's left over, which yeah. may be five hundred or whatever it may be. Yeah. So you split that in half. Is that what it's referring to? 
because that wasn't that wasn't that you know the way probably it was always like your income yeah your income includes everything before you pay your bills but the fact of the matter is if you do it you'll be on the street yeah you know nowadays i mean america is like ridiculous like huge percentage of the people don't have enough money you know to even meet a 400 dollar uh emergency. emergency yeah they're living paycheck to paycheck yeah i think and most people probably <laughs> You know, so yeah, they also don't know how to save. They waste their money because yeah, they waste their money. They go into debt. They, they buy the lottery their, they ticket. They can't control their senses. Yeah, it's impossible. <laughs> and you know, they, they they set it up so that you go into debt in order to leave lead, lead, lead a decent lifestyle. Uh, you have to go into debt, and then they've got you under control. They got the mortgage. They got the car debt, and now the, the college debt is almost like it's over a trillion dollars. You know, all the people with all that money. So it's impossible. But I think that, uh, you know, this is, it's, it's a way of understanding that the, the, the householders should, should uh, be charitable. In other words, if you, if you get into the mood of simply, you know, the household and all of these expenses, and, then it's very difficult to be a devotee. You have to feel that, you know, Krishna is the owner of the house, you know, it's owned by Bhakti Mila Thakur. But, it, but it's just not, it's very, it's, it's very difficult now for, to really do it for anyone who's not, you know, really very wealthy. I mean, a great example, you know, Ambarish. You know, Ambarish had, I remember when he uh, uh, was, was I, I was in a, um, believe it or not, a, you know what a reprise is? A reprise is, well, if, if you read the bi Prabhupada's biography, you'll realize, you know, that you, you read that, well, when he went to India, there was all these amazing pandals. You know, he had a Delhi pandal, I forget which, that was the first one. And it's like thousands of people came, you know, because they were curious because he knew the white elephants, you know, the devotees were something unique. So this was one that was done in, uh, in Delhi. And maybe it was that first one. Cross Medan? Was that? Bombay. That's Bombay. I, so I was at that one. Not, not the original, but the reprise means the repeat. Mm -hmm. in, in 2005, mm -hmm. which I think was like, what is it? Maybe it was 30 years Afterward, I don't know, maybe, but any of thirty-five years. So, so uh, Ambarish was there, you know, and he gave a talk, and he was speaking, you know, with great authority because he's like, oh, Ford's grandson and everything, and he gave millions of dollars. He already had built the the, uh, the Prabhat Samadhi in Mayapur, which was like millions of dollars, you know. He funded that, and uh, he was working on other projects, and of course now the TOVP. So he was giving this lecture, and he was just laying into. You know, because here's somebody who's, uh, you know, who knows, maybe he has hundreds of millions of it. And yet he was funding this thing. So he, w he had a tremendous amount of uh, credibility, you know, to be able to say like that. So, so that's uh, one of the, uh, the, the great things about, you know, if you're a householder and you can actually give charity, then you can also preach on that basis and help, you know, help the movement so that the, the householders are supporting the Brahman Shai, like you have in, uh, in Chaupati. You know, you have such a wild, big, uh, very enthusiastic congregation. I was there, and uh, the brahmacharis are living. Of course, they are also collecting with you know book distribution and everything. But it's a tremendous uh, feeling that the householders feel, oh yeah, we're supporting these brahmacharis, and they don't have to worry about that. They can just 100% preach. You know, that's the idea. So what the percentage actually is, it's not easy to meet 50%. Now Rupa Goswami, <laughs> of course he. At the end of the whole deal, he had nothing. He he gave fifty percent. I think was it fifty percent to his relatives, and or fifty percent to the Vaishnavas and Brahmins. Twenty five percent to his relatives at Prabhupada because they'll expect something, you know. And if they don't, they'll go to court. So you want to do that, and then twenty five percent for emergencies. So what does he have left? Nothing. <laughs> He's a sannyasi. And then the twenty five percent was used to bail out or to bribe the uh, get sanatana out. You know, you know the story. And then they lived as, as austere as possibly to, as it's possible to poss uh, live in this world. No home, no, no you know, food, begging their food, right? This in, this. But they were, what is it? Chaktva, Turnam, Ashesha, Mandala, Pati, Shading, Sadat, Tuchavat. They immediately, Turnam, quickly, without delay, you know, contemplating, should I, should I? Uh, gave everything up. Uh, Mandala Pati Shenim, the, the circle of aristocracy and money, you know, Raghunath Das, he was like a billionaire. And you know, uh, the sole heir to a lot of money. So they gave it up, you know, 
and then took on uh, in order to become the instructors and the examples for these uh, uh, wretched souls, you know, the non-devotees. They did it for, for preaching. Kadunaya, uh, out of Kadunaya. Kopina Kantashito, taking shelter of just the Kopin, and the, you know, that, that's it. You know, the, the little clothes as possible, no home, and no source of income for food, you know, no health insurance. And so, uh, so were they, you know, you think, well, I, they must have been really miserable. No. Gopi Bhavata Samata Lalika Lola Magnomaha, again and again diving and drinking the nectar ocean of Gopi Bhava. They were the wealthiest. So that's the uh, perfect ideal. So that all comes from, uh, you know, even the impetus for our little renunciation, it's only possible when we're regularly drinking the nectar of Krishna consciousness. And you can live as simply as possible. Okay, all glories to the Prabhupada. Hari Hari Bo.